everyone welcome back to my channel so today we are going to talk about how to build a wardrobe so I'm going to show you 25 pieces that I feel like are very essential when it comes to building up your wardrobe and having enough items in your closet to where you can style them for pretty much any occasion or any season so if you want to see my suggestions on how to build a wardrobe then just keep on watching the first thing we're going to talk about is outerwear and the first one is a warm coat i live in alabama so it doesn't get that cold here which means i don't really need something extremely heavy this is about all i need if you live in a colder climate i would definitely recommend in investing in something that is a little better and warmer but for me, this is this is from J. Crew. I think it was around to like less than two hundred dollars, and that was a good enough investment for me based on how often and how warm I really need this jacket to be. It has a hood. It's a neutral color, which I definitely recommend when going with a warm coat outerwear piece. Pick neutral and pick the warmth that you need for your climate. Next is a trench. So I definitely invested in my trench, but you don't always have to. This is a Burberry trench and I love this. Like this is my favorite thing in my closet probably, but it is a little expensive. So if you want to go the trench coat route, there are tons of options that are more affordable, more affordable prices. And I don't really think you need to invest in a trench unless you plan to wear it all the time. Which for me, I plan to wear this pretty much all throughout the fall. And I plan to wear it next spring as well. And I want to keep this for a lifetime. So that is why I chose to invest. But if you're only going to wear it on occasion, I don't think you need to spend quite as much on a trench. Next is a leather jacket. So I have a tan colored leather jacket but obviously you could do black as well. This worked really, really great for me last winter. I wore this all the time. It's real leather and it was a little, actually I wouldn't say it was expensive. I feel like it was a relatively good price for a leather jacket, but it's definitely an investment piece. So there are so many options out there. You could definitely go with something that's faux leather and that will suffice for a little while. But when it comes to a leather jacket, I kind of recommend investing just because I feel like you can get a lot more use out of a real leather jacket or even a vegan leather jacket as opposed to something that is faux leather where you're only going to probably be able to wear it for a couple of seasons. Now my only outerwear piece that I don't recommend investing in and that is a jean jacket. This was great for me to have in my wardrobe throughout the spring and it probably will be for the early fall as well because it's so lightweight and you can just throw it on top of anything, even leggings and a t-shirt, which is kind of mostly how I wore this jacket. But this was like $27. I got it at Target. I definitely wouldn't spend anything over 50 on a jean jacket, especially if you're somebody like me who doesn't really wear this style very often. But I do think it is a great thing to have in your wardrobe to pull out just whenever you might need it. Moving on to tops. So I think I have like eight tops here and they're all kind of based on your personal style. So for this first one, this is a white blouse. Now you could go with a classic button down white blouse. I personally wish I had one, but I haven't found one that I love yet. So I went with this one from Anthropology. When it comes to a classic white blouse, I do recommend investing a little bit of money in it just so that you can keep it for years to come and you don't have to continue to replace it every season. Same goes for a black blouse. I actually have two that I wanted to show. This one is a lot more flowy at the bottom. It's kind of a different style, but it's super cute. I wore this tons last fall and throughout the winter. But this one is a little bit more cropped, and I do like that. I always wear high-waisted jeans, so it's not like it's actually that cropped. But this used to be a dress, and I just cut it off to make it a shirt. Well, I had the alterations place cut it off to make it a shirt. 
but I absolutely love this and I think both of these are good options to have in your wardrobe. It just kind of depends on what suits your personal style best. But I would recommend investing in this as well just because you can keep this for years to come. Next is a chunky knit. So when it gets cold outside, we all want something comfortable but cute to go out in for like dinner or work or whatever it may be. And I definitely think a chunky knit is a good option. This is actually from H&M. I did not invest very much money in this. And that is because I just wasn't sure how much I would really, like how much use I would really get out of this. So I chose to go a less expensive route to see how much I really wore it. In the future, when this gets too like gross and old, I will probably invest in a chunky knit that I love. Just because this one is a little itchy, but it's cute and it does the job. Next are two tanks. So I have a white and a black. Obviously, I feel like this is very self-explanatory, but these are perfect to wear as a layering piece, but they're also perfect to wear in the spring and summertime when it is just too terribly hot outside. They're both super simple, so they match literally anything. I've worn both of them probably a hundred times. I did invest in both of these. So the black one is from Elitaire, but it's the brand Black Label, and it was a little bit more of an investment tank, but I'm gonna keep this until I die. Like, I love this. And then this is from Cezanne, and it was kind of probably around the same price, another investment piece. But like I said, I'm going to keep this for a really long time. And it's such a great piece to have in your wardrobe. My next top is a t-shirt. So when it comes to a t-shirt, I definitely recommend finding something that is cute and comfortable, but looks a little bit more put together than just a basic, plain, boring t-shirt. So I have this one from Mason Kitsoon, and it says Parisian on it. I absolutely love this. I did invest in this, but I don't necessarily think that you have to spend $80 on a t-shirt to get a good quality t-shirt. Probably wouldn't find one at like H&M or Forever 21, so maybe look somewhere else. I know that Able, the brand Able, sells great t-shirts for like $36. We sell them at Elitaire, and those are amazing, and they're super soft, but it does the job, and it's not quite as expensive as this. But I do love this, and if you're looking for a really cute t-shirt that you can wear all the time, this. Next is a black sweater. Kind of weird, but I feel like this is a really good thing to have in your wardrobe. And I say that because I have only had it in my wardrobe for, I want to say like a week or two now, and I've already worn it multiple times, and it's not even cold outside. So it is a thinner sweater, so it's no nowhere near as thick and warm as a chunky knit, but it is great to wear in the fall, and you can layer over top of it, you can layer something underneath it, you can wear it with skirts, you can wear it with jeans, I don't know. It's just a great piece to have in your wardrobe, and I much prefer a black because I just like black the best. It just, I feel like it suits my style and my wardrobe very well. My last top is a wrap top. So this is a short sleeve wrap top, and I chose that simply due to the fact that you can wear this kind of year round because you can pop a cardigan over or a jacket over it in the fall and winter. But you could also wear this alone by itself in the spring and summer. I also love this color because it is a neutral color. It's nothing too crazy, but, and it doesn't scream summer, but it also doesn't scream fall. And then as far as a wrap top goes, wrap tops are so flattering on pretty much everybody. So I definitely think this is a great style to have in your wardrobe and something that you can just pick out and wear at any time of the year. Next, we will move on to dresses. I actually only have three dresses because I just don't really think that you need a wardrobe full of dresses because unless you wear dresses on a regular basis, then it just doesn't seem practical for me. So for me, I have three, well, I mean, I have more, but these I would say are my like must-haves. 
simple black dress. This is from Ella Tear. It's the brand Foxy Docs. I absolutely love this. It's super flattering. Um, you've probably seen pictures of this on my Instagram before, but I love this. It is a great black dress. Next is a colorful dress. So I recommend having at least one colorful dress in your wardrobe just in case, in case for a date night or a girls night or Valentine's Day or a holiday party, whatever it may be, I just feel like it's very important to have at least one kind of statement dress that is kind of, I would say this is semi-formal to formal, but I would also make it kind of casual-ish. So at least one statement dress. And then lastly, a dress that you would wear to a wedding any time of the year. So this is mine. It's navy blue on the bottom, but it's a lot more neutral on the top. And depending on what shoes you pair with it, I feel like you can wear this all year long. And same, like depending on what jacket you pair over it. But I just think it's a great piece to have in your wardrobe when a lot of times, sometimes you kind of forget. Not that you forget you're going to a wedding, you just forget you don't have anything to wear to said wedding. So if you always have a dress like this in your wardrobe, you always have something to fall back on. And that is what this dress is. This is my wedding guest dress, essentially, and I love it. Next we'll do bottoms. So I have four that I'm going to show you physically, but I'm going to mention a fifth one. For starters, I think that everybody needs a pair of black ripped denim if you're into ripped denim. If you hate ripped denim, then just ignore me for the next few seconds. But I just think black jeans in general are really flattering. And then a ripped denim is my personal favorite and I feel like looks the best on me. So these are from Topshop. They were like $80. They're not crazy expensive, but... It just depends on how much you normally spend on jeans, if you consider that an investment or not. But I definitely probably wouldn't spend any less than this on a pair of black jeans, just because I feel like these have held up really well. I've had them for about two years, and I love them. Next is a pair of just black jeans. I have a pair from Abel. They are just in the wash right now, and so I can't get them for you. But they have no rips in them. They're a perfect jean to wear kind of all the time and like I said black is very flattering so even though they don't have rips in them I still like them. <laughs> Next is just a normal denim. Like I said I like ripped jeans. I personally have yet to find a pair of like normal denim that has zero rips in them that I like on my body. So these are my Levi 501 uh skinny jeans and I absolutely love these these are my favorite jeans I really don't know if I'll ever find a jean that I love more than this I have definitely tried but I feel like these are the most flattering on my body and they're a great thing to have in your wardrobe I feel like everybody always needs a good pair of jeans last two bottoms are skirts so one is a go-to summer skirt and one is a go-to fall and winter skirt so as far as this like spring summer skirt goes, it does not have to be red and it does not have to be this style, but it just needs to be something that you kind of always gravitate towards. So for me, this is a good length. I can wear this pretty much anywhere and feel comfortable. And as far as the red color goes, I have so many things in my closet that match this as whether it's a t-shirt or a sweater or a long sleeve top. I have so many things that match this, so this really is truly my go-to spring and summer skirt because it's kind of thin. It was a little, it I would probably consider it an investment. Um, it's from the brand Cameo. I got it at Ella Tear, but it's totally worth it, and I've already worn this like, I bet you I've worn this over 50 times, and that's a lot for me. That's a lot. And then we have the fall winter skirt. I went with something plaid and I don't know if you can tell that it's a little bit thicker material than the other skirt, but this is perfect for the fall and winter with like over the knee boots or booties, just kind of anything. 
and it's very neutral colors so it matches my fall winter wardrobe very well um but i absolutely love this and this is definitely my go-to skirt for the fall and winter and i feel like you always need to have a skirt that you just can't live without last is shoes i only have five pairs of shoes to show you so this should go relatively fast the first one is a pair of black heels so these are my christian louboutins Obviously, you do not have to spend Louboutin prices to get a good pair of black heels. But if you want to keep them for years and years to come, then I do recommend investing. You don't necessarily have to. You can get some shoes at Target that are relatively comfortable. They're black, they're cute, and they work really well. They might not last you for the rest of your life, but if you're kind of like, eh, I don't want to spend any more money than I have to, then that's always a good option. If you do want to go with a Louboutin that you know you'll wear, I think black is a great option. I would say black or nude simply because, one, these aren't the most comfortable shoes in the world. They're adorable and I love them and I'm so happy I have them, but they are definitely not the most comfortable shoe. So I don't recommend getting something so crazy that you're literally never going to wear it or you're only going to wear it once which is why I went with a black this is the Pagali so it's a decent height but it's not like terribly tall and it is a pointed toe I love these next is a pair of nude or like neutral colored heels or sandals so these are my Chanel sandals. They have a block heel. If I get them too close to the camera, you'll see how dirty they are. I probably walked over 50, I probably walked 50 to 100 miles in these shoes. And that is not an exaggeration. I took these to Paris and wore them several times while I was there. And they have also been to New York with me twice. And we tend to do a lot of walking. So... I absolutely love these. I think that they are a great piece to have. If you can't tell, I like to invest in my footwear, but that is not a thing for everybody. And I don't necessarily think you have to, but if you are looking for a really comfortable sandal, Chanel knows what they're doing. Just saying. Next are some booties. So if you read any of my blogs from last fall or winter, you probably saw these at least 100 times because I wore them every single day. Honestly, this year, this has been my shoe of the year. Last year, this was my shoe of the year. But I think this is just a great shoe to have. It's a tan booty. It matches so many things. I wore it with what I have on last year and I loved it. I personally, I personally prefer things with a heel. A chunky block heel makes it a little bit more comfortable, but a heel just gives me a little bit more height, and I absolutely love these. They're super comfortable. They're Kristen Cavalieri by Chinese Laundry, and they were like $175, so not as much as an investment as the other shoes that I've shown you so far, or the two shoes that I'm going to show you after that but they are more expensive than like a Target shoe or H&M or even Zara. But when I say these are amazing, they're amazingly comfortable and I love them. Next, a black booty because you can't have a tan booty without having a black booty. I mean, you can if tan is mostly what you wear, but for me, I wear a lot of black in the fall and winter, so having a black booty is kind of essential took me a really long time to find a booty that I didn't hate that was in black but this one you can kind of tell they're a similar kind of style this one's a little bit higher and uh this part is a little bit smaller around the ankle but I absolutely love these these are my YSL booties and I really love them they do take a second to break in I learned that the hard way but I absolutely love these and these will probably be my shoe of the fall, I'm guessing, because I've already worn them twice for blog posts, and it's not even fall yet, so. Last, last item of this entire thing is a pair of nice sneakers. 
these are my Gucci sneakers. I absolutely love them. I feel like I've talked about them before in a blog or something, but I absolutely love these. They go with skirts, they go with dresses, it goes with jeans, shorts, whatever your heart desires, a pair of leggings. I love these shoes and I really do wear them all the time and they're also very comfortable. You definitely do not have to invest this much money in a pair of nice sneakers. Tons of brands make sneakers that look very similar to this. I just chose to go that I just chose to go this route because I knew I liked these and I figured I would wear them a lot. So I went with the Gucci ones. But you definitely don't have to. But if you are looking to invest in some really nice sneakers, these are amazing. And I love them. That is it for how to build a wardrobe. These are my 25 items that I feel like I honestly couldn't live without and I feel like they are the best items to help kind of make your wardrobe a little bit more wearable and have pieces that you need throughout the entire year. So if you enjoyed this video make sure to give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below and I will see you in the next video. Bye!